Hey everybody, I'm Steph. I'm Michael. Today we're checking out Skyrise. From Roxley. Yes. This game plays two to four players and has a box play time of 30 to 75 minutes. Highly dependent on player count. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so thanks to Roxley for providing us this copy of Skyrise, but they didn't give it to us in exchange for this video. They gave it to us because they know we like to play all the games. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get right to it uh, while I teach you all the rules. Hey, Risto. So, um, you are going to need the center section here. Uh, I should mention, this is the collector's edition. It does not have all the super deluxe components. We have plastic buildings instead of wooden buildings or washed minis. Um, we have a key to the city token, but uh, some copies have a metal key to the city. And then there's an add-on for upgraded wooden discs that you would use, but we just have the punch board. Um, we do have the little balloon scoring markers. Yep. Um, and uh, the collector's edition also comes with these uh, big plastic island pieces that you can sort, you know, you can put them on whichever side that you want, mix and match. Um, but there are ultimately only four of these pieces in the box. <clears throat> um, any other differences in the uh, collector's edition? I can't think of any off the top of my I don't head. Think so. I'm, I'm not sure if all of the editions have the yeah. cool shiny, little shiny, shiny back. As far as I cards. know. Yeah. So um, you are going to set up a number of island pieces based on player count. Two players, so we've got two island pieces, outer islands. And then you also have the central island, of course. Um, you are going to remove a number of patron discs, which are the discs with the letters on them, and neighborhood discs, which are the discs that are colored. You're going to remove a certain number based on player count. You're going to mix everything uh, up into the bag and place one disc per neighborhood. You'll notice that they have colors on them or uh, um, letters on them or maybe a plus one on them or all four colors for a wild disc. Um, you're going to shuffle up the 20 wonder cards and deal three face down to each player. In a two-player game, you're going to deal five to each player because... In a two-player game, you're going to have two wonders per player as opposed to one wonder per player in a three- or four-player game. You're also going to shovel up the four secret objective cards and deal one face down to each player. Basically, the secret objectives uh, are just used for... Um, you want to uh, have uh, four or more of a certain color neighborhood. So... I might be looking for green or red or white or yellow neighborhoods. If you see that I am going after a certain color of neighborhood, you might guess that, oh, hey, maybe that's what his secret objective is. Um, there's also the island control card that you're going to put um, next to the board. Obviously, on a two-player board, we don't need all the space, so we're going to use the game board itself. Um, we've also, uh, we're also going to shuffle the five panorama cards, draw two, and place them next to that island control card. And you're not gonna need the rest of them for the rest of the game. Shuffle up the patron value tiles and place one next to the A, B, C, and D patrons. Um, when you're playing with three and four players, you're gonna need, uh, in addition to the key to the city, you're also gonna need the small key to the city. It is a uh, really small uh, four that looks like a little flower. It's like this part of the key um, doesn't really look like a key at all. Yeah, um, like a fob thing. Each player will receive a player board uh, and uh, take the scoring disc of your color, put it on the zero, take the 12 uh, buildings of your color, and you'll notice that each of the buildings has a number on the bottom. Some of them also have a dot, like this number 11 building. The ones with the dots and your wonder, or in a two-player game, both of your wonders are going to be set to the side. You're not going to need those until halfway through the game when we go to era two. 
So it's really easy to put all of these buildings upside down so that you can see all of the numbers. Um, and uh, make sure to take a look at your wonder card so that you can figure out which one or two of the wonder cards you're going to play during the game. I've been chosen as the star player, so I'm going to go first with uh, starting the first auction. Um, we are basically going to play two eras. Each era is going to be played over a series of auctions. Era one is going to end when one player has constructed all of their era one buildings. Era two ends when all players have constructed all of their buildings and wonders. So keep in mind, era one triggers when one player's done it. Era two triggers when all players have done it. That's a little bit, a little bit different. Um, each player has 12 buildings. Um, we start off with uh, our initial seven. We're going to get five more plus our wonder later on. Um, keep in mind that wonders are not considered buildings. But however, buildings and wonders are collectively called structures. You'll also notice that these buildings come in three heights, small, medium, and large, um, or short, medium, and tall. Oh, yeah. uh, the wonders do not have a height, uh, and they do not contribute to island control. So you want to have tall buildings and a lot of buildings if you want to have island control. So. Um, you'll notice that uh, each of these little regions, they are called neighborhoods. They have four different colors. Yellow, for those who uh, are into the theme, it sort of looks a little bit like a steampunky sort of theme. Yellow is populated by philosophers. Green by naturalists. White is by artists. And brown, made up of inventors. Um, it's uh, It might be important to... Um, understand adjacency rules for some of the cards. For example, chains, you'll score for um, adjacent structures. Uh, adjacent neighborhoods are those that share a border, not a corner, not a blimp. So these are uh, definitely adjacent, but if there were a four-way sort of deal, uh, like here, here's a, yeah, these are both really good examples. Here, going across to here, are not adjacent. Here to here are not adjacent. So, um, we're going to start off by uh, having an auction. An auction is always started by the player who won the most recent auction or randomly determined at the beginning of era one. At the beginning of era two, the first auction is started by the player whose wonder card has the lowest value. You'll notice that these wonder cards have a variety of numbers here at the top. And so whoever has a, a wonder card with the lowest value is going to start the first auction in era two. In a two player game, remember, we're going to have two auctions. So you're going to sum those numbers together. So, um, Whenever a player has constructed their last structure, obviously they're not going to need to do any auctions anymore because they have no more buildings. Um, so the uh, next auction is started by uh, the remaining player whose wonder card has the lowest initiative value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place any of my buildings. These numbers are used basically as bids. I'm going to place it number side up in an unoccupied neighborhood either located on the central island, which obviously that's where I'm going to have to start the first turn, or adjacent to an already constructed building constructed by any player. So if Steph already had that, I could start my auction here. I could start my auction here, maybe here, maybe over here. So, um, and once you place uh, the building, all the bids stay number side up. And then we're going to keep going clockwise around the table. You can either outbid or pass, or if you have your wonders in era two, you could place your wonder. Placing a wonder pretty much wins the bid. You'll notice on the bottom of the wonder, there's a big old W for winner on the uh, winner and wonder on the bottom of these wonders. Um, so there is actually a wonder card that will allow a wonder to beat another wonder. So um, 
let's say I place here. Steph will choose to, if she decides to outbid, she has to place her building next to where I have my bid. So Steph could choose this yellow uh, neighborhood, this green neighborhood, or down this little bridge to this green neighborhood. Notice these neighborhoods are linked by bridges here, 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 and here. If we had other island pieces, you notice where the little bridges would have gone um, in order to connect up to other areas. So let's say uh, that uh, she goes here. I could go here or here, and we just keep going back and forth like that as long as we uh, go adjacent and we keep outbidding each other. As soon as everyone passes around, then Steph would have uh, gotten this 51 building. She will turn her medium-sized building up on this area. She will take this neighborhood disc, whichever uh, disc that this is, and we will all take back our bids and they will be ready to be used again. So uh, if this was a disc of a neighborhood color, she would put it on her, uh, on her player board. Uh, this one is a plus one. As you can see here, this plus one is uh, a commissions disc. Each commissions disc you hold at the end of era two is going to increase the value of each thing that you have put here on your visionary by one point. Um, what will you put here? You're going to put, uh, obviously, all of these plus ones. You are going to place patron discs, which have a letter A, B, C, or D. Uh, and you might have a uh, possibility of putting one of these neighborhood discs, but only if you have gotten five or more of them. I'll talk a little bit about that in just a second. Um, so let's say that she did get this green neighborhood disc. She's going to put it in her green area here. Notice that on these player boards, you'll notice that there are numbers here at the top. Two, three, four, six, four. And you might be like, well, that's sort of weird that it goes down at the end. Well, that's that's what happens if you end up getting too many of these neighborhood discs. Right now, I'm going to get two points for every yellow neighborhood at the end of the game that I have. Three points for every green neighborhood, two for each white neighborhood, and two for each brown neighborhood that I have. If for some reason I've collected four green discs, I'm only getting four per green neighborhood. If only I had stopped and gotten six per green neighborhood. But let's say I have a fifth green disc. At that, That's called shooting the moon. Every green disc that I put after that gives me 10 extra points. And I will put that disc over here on my character portrait, which will be influenced by these plus one tokens. Uh, every token that you put over there with that plus one will be worth one additional point. So you'll notice that if if Steph were to pick this up, it gives a green token, but she has control of a, a white neighborhood. So maybe they don't match up. Obviously, something like this, a green token in a green neighborhood or a brown token in a brown neighborhood would probably be ideal. That is, depending on what you're looking for. If you do manage to get one of these letter discs, uh, let's say I put this D and I put it on my portrait, I get to look at patron D. See how much patron D is worth, and that's how many points this token is going to be worth for me at the end of the game. Um, and I can... Uh, I will keep that secret to myself and not let Steph know what it is um, because there are going to be two of them on the board. Um, if I don't go after the second one, maybe she can guess, oh, maybe that's not worth very much. I think they're three, four, five, and eight value. Yeah, they're like, there's one of them that's really good. Yeah, that is correct. Three, four, five, and eight. So um, at the end of arrow one, we are going to score island control including the central island. Um, whoever has control of the island is going to get five prestige. Um, how do you determine island control? Well, first you check to see who has the greatest quantity of tall buildings. If we have the same number or neither of us have any, 
we're going to compare the medium buildings on that island. And if it's still a tie, we're going to compare the short buildings. And if they're still a tie, all tied players will score five for island control. Obviously, I'm fairly sure you've got to have something on the island to have any chance of controlling it. Yeah. So then you're going to score your panorama cards. For each of these panorama cards, you're going to score for each time you fulfill its objective. Remember that there are five different ones, and we've chosen two for this game. For this game, we have score three for each island, where you have three or more adjacent structures. Obviously, you can only score it three times. And then we have lakes. Score three for each lake with three or more of your structures bordering it. We have one, two, three lakes, as far as I can see. Yeah, I agree. We got a little bitty pond here. I don't think that counts. A little bitty ponds here. No. I think it's just the dark blue ones. Yep. Then, at the end of era one, you're going to choose your one or two wonder cards, and that is uh, going to determine uh, what your wonder will do when you build it and your initiative for era two. So, let's say I choose these two. I will turn them face up, and I will put my scoring discs on so I at least with two players, you don't you don't really know, I mean, which one of these belongs to blue and which one to green. You want to make sure to assign one of your discs to each so that the other players know which one of these abilities will be activated. Is it face down or face up? It's face up, but I'm not yeah, showing yeah, it yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah. Because I don't want to give away my grand scheme. Oh. <laughs> I want to know. Then you're going to unlock all your era two structures. Those will go with the rest of your stuff. If you have any era one structure structures remaining, because one of the two of us will have something remaining, they'll just go along with all your other buildings. Then we're going to do the same thing for era two. When any player constructs their final structure during era two, uh, as I mentioned, the next auction will be started by the player with the next lowest initiative value. With a two-player game, it's not going to matter that much. The first player to construct all their structures is going to get key to the city. That's going to be worth a cool 10 points. And then in a three- or four-player game, whoever is the second player to construct all of their structures gets the little four-point small key to the city. Then we're going to do the same thing as we did at the end of Era 1. We're going to check for island control. We're going to score for our panorama cards. We're going to score our secret objectives. We're going to score all of our patron discs and all of our neighborhood discs. We're going to check to see all of the, um, all of the, uh, like if I have three yellow neighborhoods, I'm going to get six points for each of my yellow neighborhoods. Um, and you're going to score, um, let's see, for your keys to the city and your commissions discs. Um, most prestige is the winner. In the case of a tie, whoever constructed the final structure first, basically whoever has the key to the city in this case is the winner. And uh, that's all the rules. I think I've covered everything. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. Let's go ahead and start this bidding off. There. With a 23 on the C green. Okay, let's come now. Mm -hmm. Where do I want to go? I don't know. I can't go across to the yellow. Well, you just let me have it. Uh, nope. How about 33 here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 51. And it's in the the brown zone and the sort of looks reddish to me. Yeah. All the way around the board, aren't we? Yep. 64. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go with 83. I would have to do my 91. Yeah, is it worth that? Okay. 
could make you go ahead and commit that's that right. that wild without knowing what the rest of your stuff is going to be. That's true. Because once you take that wild, you have to uh, assign it to a color. I mean, I'm probably going to put on yellow because I actually have a yellow building. How about it? Sure. I'll do it. And then you can start yours off. Sweet. I'm going to do this one. Ooh. See, if I just did Little Baby 24, you could have done, like, whatever Little if Baby. You know, here, I was going to tell everybody, if I go here, there's nowhere she can go. She has to pass. Yep. So it depends on how much you want it. I'm, I'm making him pay a little bit for it. <laughs> okay. Who wants to go over there? <laughs> okay. Now I need to take a closer look. 53. I should look at these a little bit. Um... Go to yellow. Kind of like yellow because I'm now scoring more for yellow. Sure. Let's. Mm -hmm. I guess. 61. <clears throat> uh huh. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go. Let's go win this. What is it? 94. 94 is going to win it. Yeah. Hey, Yellow. Well. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, Yellow. 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 It's also a good spot because it's in between two legs for the leg thing. So I'm like, I'm just going to throw it down. It has a yellow disc and a yellow <laughs> region. Give me that yellow. Sure. I'll let you have it. Green with green. I wonder, do you have a green card? Now what? I mean, regardless of whether I have a green card or not, that's matching colors. No, oh, I know. I'm okay. I, I act, however, I th did think about going red and red, but I thought you would go to the Central Island, which is interesting that you did not. No. Very interesting. Very interesting. Where do I go? Where do you go? Where do you go? We have three Trump buildings right now, so if you play them, you win it. Mm -hmm. Not a great position for me, but... But I don't want to play them. I know, I'm just saying. I don't want to play them. No, oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Can't go there. Oh, that's not next to. It's across the lake from. Yep. You're right. I can't go there. Yeah. True. You can't beat. You can't beat my number no matter what. Nope. I can't beat 73, 82, 91. Oh, yeah. Do I make you burn some more? Is the question. You can. You still can't go there. No, it's not. <laughs> 
He's trying uh, so hard here. to go. Still can't go there. Not <laughs> here. Still no. Still no. No way of getting across the lake. Yeah, no. How about here? Yeah. Mm. Thirty one. There. Thirty wonderful there. Yep. Oh. You can have it. Wow, this is a baby spot. How about, how about this? Still can't go there. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I want you to go there. What? What? You're about to give me nothing but big buildings. Yep. I don't like you got a big building over here. Why? Because you have a big building over here. Right. Well, that's no I don't like it. I know what I would do if I were you. Yep. It's very obvious to me. Very obvious to you. Goody, goody, goody. It's not obvious to me. I mean, I, there's a lot of things I can do at any time. Sure. And I don't want to play them too quickly. Okay. Okay. Then Mm -hmm. yeah, that's I accept your tribute. Sure. Is it good? <laughs> eh. Either means it's a three or an eight. <laughs> Don't know which. <laughs> now what? Mm hmm. Uh, 
That was the obvious play. Mm -hmm. Yep. Question is, where do I want to go next? That's the question. Force you to play your stuff. Okay. But I can't do it. Why? That's a little bit surprising. Why? Um, I don't know. It just is. Okay, let me put that back. I mean, I guess I will do this. Okay. I thought you were going to do that. No, there's no reason to. I have control of this now for the rest of the game. True, but I'll get That's why I did it. Yeah. You do get a chain, but I get control. I made you burn both of those buildings. That's fine. It, I mean, it's good points for you, so. Yeah. I don't hear you complaining. I'm not. All right, I will. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Here, I'll go to the red, red region over here. Over there. That one. Yeah. You can get your wild token. Do I want a wild token? Yes, you just get a lot of points, so. Why do I get a lot of points? Oh, for the red? Uh, yeah. It's now six times red. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. No, okay. Oh. Mm. I could do this. Sure. I will put it white. White? Right, that's yours. All right, where to? 
look right there. That's cleared. Yeah. That's the end better. of the era. And that's it's not great for me. Why I did that. Yeah. So we're going to do our era one scoring. Um we are going to score island control. I have control of this for five points. Steph has control of the left island for five points. We both have control of this island. I believe it. We both get it. Yeah, I think yes, it's good. we do both get it. So we are both at 10. Yeah. Chains. You have a chain. I have a chain. That's about it. Three points. I have some lakes. You get lakes. Ill dessert. All right. We are going to choose wonder cards and reveal simultaneously. I got to think for a minute. Yeah, I don't know. Play the nut, I guess. I don't know if it really matters which is which. But I'm doing that. Hi, Delphia. <laughs> I think I'll do that. All right. Reveal. 19 total. 22 total. So, I have score two for every bid placed during this auction. On the island where this one is constructed, score three for each different neighborhood color on which you have a structure. Steph has score three for every tall building on this wonder's island. And score four for each color of neighborhood disc of which you have, I can't read it. Equal or more than other players. Wow. Well, you're going to kick on that one. Holy mackerel. Hopefully. And the wonders obviously will not sit on their face. So do it like this. I am first. Aren't I first because you ended it? I have lower. Remember, uh, oh, yeah. per the rules explanation, add the numbers together for a two-player game. All right. But normally, it's lowest, but add them together, and it's lowest. Wonders, I can't just drop my wonder, can I? You can, yeah. I can just drop my wonder. Yeah.
not liking the uh, the options I've got. Wendy. Um. Fifty one. Mm -hmm. All right, you win. Calm down. Stay on the cloud. Fifty one. One twelve wins it. That will. Or I can get ten points for the the uh, blue. I don't think I'm going to get much better than 10. I will do it. Okay, now what? That's a good question. That is probably good. Not what I want. I got to get rid of these uh, these little baby tokens here. <laughs> oh, 
That means I just have to let you have it. Which, why would I want to do that? Oh, you won't let me, I'm sure. You won't let me have any of it. Stop. Eleven. Uh Thanks. You're welcome. I'll take this too. <laughs> you know what this is? I do. <laughs> uh huh. Must be the eight. Yeah, I wish. I will. What? Not great. So on this space. This one here. Yeah. I'm going to score um, 12 for, for four different neighborhood colors. It was really good. I had no choice. Your turn. 12, 28, 38. Because I was waiting for something to hit in this region. Mm -hmm. That's how that goes. Hey, you know what? That's worth one. Sure. I think mine scored at the end of the game. You scored yours right away, but I think mine scored at the end of the game. Um, mine can't score at the end of the game because I scored two for every bid placed during this auction. Yeah, that one. How, how do I? How would I know? Well, I don't know. Some of my cards say immediately score. Um. So in the rules, it says after you do the wonder, enact its. If a wonder was constructed, enact its effect. So it's when that happens. I don't know of one that doesn't. Well, it's just weird that some say immediately score. Yeah. So I will place here.
that's worth four points right off the bat. Hmm. Hmm? I'll let you have it, sadly. I think you got me this game. I don't see how. Um, six times one, two, three. Potentially four at some point. If you have six times green Three, five, and six. Eight, which is like all of your buildings. Well, unfortunately, have, there's too many greens and whites left on the board. I'd have to shoot the moon with green or white, and then I'm just looking at lit plus 20, I think, if I can get them all, which is not going to happen. And you have both wonders ready. Yeah, but there's nothing I want. I'm not just, so, <laughs> just square them out with that. I guess I'll just take this. Oh, ouch. Why? Boo. Because I wanted it. I didn't want it big enough to pay, to pay a 112 for it, but I wanted it. Yeah. And wonders don't count as talls? No, they do not. Or Ventis or Grandes either. I guess I'll go here. And then what was that one? Gets me eight points. Sorry, I'd, I'd or having all the words equal or more tokens in two columns. And you do have two. Yeah. So eight points, twenty-one. So I can do you could probably turn your balloon around. This. All right, that's an A. Would you like to look at A? Okay. Fine. Fine. And then. And then. These. I assume this counts as your color for chains. I agree. And for lakes. Let me see what she wants. Can't take it yet. Wonder or no? Mm -hmm. 
too. Is that eight points, six points? It'll be six points. This place is this one. Twenty one and six, twenty seven. your belly you ate though <laughs> no, no. i think i no i can't do that oh you can yeah it's not a good idea i'll take this one in the corner you can <laughs> that's gonna be your island for sure and that looks like uh on my island in my island oh no that's a wonder yeah, i mean could put your other potentially what's your number 111 yeah that's too bad yep and then this yep now what You're on exactly one white. Uh -huh. Might as well get rid of this while I can. All right, that's tall buildings. Sorry, I don't know what that one is. Is that tall buildings? Not a tall building. No, oh, the, sorry. I thought it was wonder. Sorry, it's not a wonder. And then I am placing here so I can at least get my chain. Yep. And uh, that's going to really help because C was eight. Oh, uh, well. Uh. Knew it early, and that's sort of saved me a little bit. So, era two, you get the 10-point key. 27 becomes 37. Right in behind. <laughs> Island control, that's 10. 38 is 48. You have one island for 42. Do I have this island? Yes, two and one, yes. Yes. Panorama cards. Uh, each island where you have a chain... I think we both have, I have two chains. You have three chains, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, correct. I have six. You have nine. Lakes. You have one lake. I have one lake. I have a lake. So you have three. I have six. Mm -hmm. Secret objectives is next. I've got three green. Yellow. Shocker. Shocker. <laughs> 60 becomes 70. 54 becomes 64. Scoot these out of the way. Scoring discs and tiles. Um, we did we score you we did score your key. Um I have um Eight, sixteen, and three is nineteen. Twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. One, two, three, and twenty is ninety-three. You have A and B, which is five and four. So we have four, eight, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, sixty-four, seventy-one, eighty-one. So what I like to do now is just put them in a line next to where they came from. Oh, that's pretty cool. Because um, then I can't mess it up. <laughs> Have you messed it up before is the question. No, but I feel like people will. That's a yellow. 
That's a white. This is the little one in the middle. Uh, do we do we do wonders too? Yes. Thank you. Yes, yeah, structures, score structures. So red, yellow, yeah. yellow, green, red, or yellow. You might get me here. Let me see. What do we got here? Six times six times most of your stuff. Let's take care of this. This is nine points. Let's do that nine points. 81 becomes 90. Now we have six times a bunch. Six times 11? Yes. Yeah, 66. 66 is 56. 156. My final score, I think. I believe that is all your points. Is. Unfortunately, I've got less, I think. These are white. These are green. That's a green. These are dinky yellow. Dinky red. I've got yellow red. Here's my bad stuff, yellow red. White green goes over here. Dinky. All right, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. 93 becomes 113. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Go back 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and score 60. 67. Yeah, you killed me. As expected. I don't know 11 points is a kill, but it, it is. is a win. Yeah, it's a kill. That's a kill. Yeah, I... Sorry, stuff. I didn't like my objectives. Oh, you didn't? The wonders. My other wonder cards were score five for each island I control. I figured I almost did this instead of the two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve bidding thing. Yeah, probably would have been smarter to it do that one. Probably would have been smarter because I figured at some point I could get control of a second island long enough to, to do it. Mm-hmm. Score eight if your structures border at least three different lakes, but that's tops at eight. Uh, and score eight if your structures border four different blimps. Again, tops out at eight. So I went for the bigger points. Yeah, and I didn't really have that option for bigger points. What were what were yours? Uh, score the panoramas, which oh. Maybe if I held on to my wonders longer, I could have scored. You did hold on to them for a long time. I know, but you you want the option to play them early to get spaces you want. Yes. This one is get two points for every building adjacent to it. So at most, it could be like eight. Um, There are, I think there are spaces that have, five. let's see, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, but. That, that was caps at 12. That was taken. Assuming this is open the entire game. It's, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. There were no opportunities to score better than eight for that. And then this one is this wonder can outbid other wonders. So the it's, hammer. it's worth no points. Right. It stops you from. It getting, stops me from getting the one thing I want. At and then, one point. But here's then the, here's you can just go next this. time to the space. So the good the good thing is that it's the lowest initiative. And so that you you likely will you will definitely go first in a three or four player game, get to take the lead. Here's the problem with this. I play my wonder on this that I really want. You hammer next to it, mm -hmm. right? And this thing is still open. I could get it later because you're hammering next to it. I guess the one thing you could do is you could hammer and then play a, a large building here or even a small building which will tall sorry no tall buildings could be adjacent to that wonder oh well i'm just saying i could build something here yeah i could build my biggest medium at that point yeah and then maybe no one can go next to possibly i'm just saying that when you hammer you don't stop me from getting the spot i wanted oh i know you stop me at that moment yeah. From playing my wonder. Yeah. I, yeah. I I don't see that being a very great card. It yeah, and that, I think that 
they wanted to make some the the worst possible ab, worst possible ability be the best possible initiative. Fine, but so, but yeah, I I, I get I would it. Never I get choose it. that one. I get ever. It. As you see, these boards are modular. You can uh, put them however you want on uh, to make a somewhat randomized game. That is the one limitation, though, is that there are no different tiles. You only have the four that come with the game. Oh, it tells you how to store it in the box. I was wondering because I'm like, it doesn't fit perfectly. <laughs> oh, OK. I probably had it in the wrong order. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, these are double sided, so you're you're only getting one pattern here. So, um, slight downside to to uh, the longevity of the game. However, I would think it would be rather easy to create an expansion that create that you'd have a map tile that sits on top of this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, it would be, it'd be easy to expand this for sure. So, uh, beautiful game from Roxley. Uh, so be sure to check it out. Um, two player is good. I think it's better with more. I've played it now with three and four and now two. But I think I liked it better with the more players just because there's even more with the longer, Even with the longer player count, you still like the more interaction. Well, yeah, yeah. because it's a bidding game. So you want to have more people bidding. and Plus, you're also wanting to... You don't feel the need to have to outbid. Right. You want to position yourself well. Right. I think in a two-player game, it becomes a lot more abstract strategic, where if I place here, she's going here, and I'm going here, mm -hmm. uh, where you can see two or three moves ahead. With three or four players, it's much harder to see that many moves ahead. Right. You know, plus, you know, it's like, oh, hey, I've got a plan to be on a spot I want four, hit, four hits from now. It's not likely to happen. Right. So, but, uh, yeah, that is, uh, it does have a lot of... Uh, a lot of different feels at different player counts. Yeah, so for sure. That is Skyrise from Roxley. And if you enjoyed this teach and playthrough and you want more just like it, hey, you can find us on YouTube at BoardGamerStef or you can join us on twitch.tv slash BoardGamerStef every Wednesday and Sunday night at 5 p.m. Central where we stream three games or more every single stream. So come join us on Twitch where we play all, all the games. games. For those on Twitch, we'll be right back.